going on guys welcome back to another video welcome back to the channel today is very exciting because today we're gonna give a little bit of maintenance to this go ahead and get the oil change differential fluid catch can check to prepare for tomorrow because we're gonna be going back to the track to see just how much or if any improvement we get from switching over to skins Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Jorge, and this is my 2019 Camaro SS. I've had it since March, so about six months now, and it has 2,500 miles on it. So, I've already done the oil change once before at about 500 miles, and this is going to be the second oil change. Um, I've also changed the differential oil as well, back at about 700 miles, and this is going to be the next one. If you, I've guys have seen my earlier videos which I'll probably link here I've done a video on changing the oil and I've done a video on changing the differential fluid um, which is very very simple um, you can definitely go click back to those but we're gonna be doing all that today um, we're also gonna be checking the catch can and emptying that out making sure that that is fresh and everything's free-flowing so we got a few things to do as you guys know I also have this quick jack lift which uses rubber blocks and you can get the car perfectly lifted all the way across um, it's nice and ready even with the hood up the tire rack does not impede or hit the hood which is awesome now in my oil change video again um, I'm gonna tell you guys what oil we use on the 2019s because they do call for 0 W40 Dexos and the one that is recommended by GM is actually this uh, Mobile One ESP, which is an emission system protection Dexos 2040. Uh, still not widely available here in the US. I had to order these through Amazon, and they are actually pretty expensive. A case of these is $60, so six for they're about $10 a quart. They don't sell them in five uh, quart jugs. And then, of course, for your oil filter, you're going to use a PF64 is what the manual calls for. And these are actually still pretty difficult to find. I had to go to the dealer to get this one because my local AutoZone and Arise did not have that. Now, for the differential fluid, we go AC Delco's uh, Dextron LS gear oil with the limited slip modifier is what we use. And here is the model number. It's an 10-4034 and 8886264 is the I think AC Delco number. Uh, get I got this through Amazon, um, and you only need a quart, 1.2 quarts, so one one of these bottles and then like a little bit more. You'll know it's very easy to know once you're done filling. Um, you will need a little transfer pump. Uh, they sell them at Walmart for like five dollars, and that's uh, what I'll be using. Go ahead and check out my video on when I did that. So pretty easy and then of course we've got the catch can here which I will be checking as well so very easy very simple uh, you want to go ahead and just little quick tips go ahead and turn the car on let the car idle a little bit get up to temp to make it easier to drain um, you can remove this cap here to also let it drain out faster but other than that if you guys have any other questions you can go back and check my oil change video and also my differential fluid change video all right guys so if you guys remember from when I did my old change video I actually installed this dimple magnet uh, drain plug and I don't see any shavings I didn't see any shavings you guys can see there but there's definitely sludge that has kind of built up at the tip um, and that's just over 2,500 miles. The oil itself has actually been pretty clean, came out really clean. Um, there was really not much issues there, no concern. But it's interesting that the magnet's actually able to capture. This is probably still from the break-in, since I did change this oil at 500 miles. This is probably just the fine dust of everything kind of getting seated properly. And then this magnet is able to catch it and not have it go through the rest of the system again so uh, magnet magnetic drain plug definitely worth so just finished putting in the oil as you guys can see 
I've got six empty here and four empty here and obviously I got two left over but yes your LT1 engine does require 10 quarts of oil so oil change is good now we're gonna go to the differential fluid and go ahead and take care of that all right guys so check it out so this is the differential fluid it doesn't actually look bad at all it's still like when you're seeing the stream go down pretty clear pretty clean but there is a lot of metal or like not metal but just little dust and stuff and as you can see these bolts this one here is the bottom drain plug and there's already build up they're both magnetic so you can kind of see the build up there you can see there's a lot more gunk and build up on the drain one on which is the one in the bottom but um overall not bad at all I, I feel like it's actually pretty good this is one of those things that i've heard a lot of horror stories about people that don't change them out and then they end up grenading their rear diffs at the track and things like that but uh it's really easy to do um you again just need a 3 8 wrench without any adapters literally just the, pl the plugs that are square 3 8 hole so very easy access and everything and just use one full quart and I uh, think about another two tenths here so it's 1.2 quarts and of course you can use one of these things which is basically just screws right onto the the, the, the bottle there it makes it super easy to pump in the, all the oil so now that it's all drained I can put clean up all that gunk from the plugs put the drain plug back in and start filling up the pumpkin again with oil, fresh new oil differential fluid is done now one thing if you guys don't check out my differential fluid video is when you do change out your differential fluid it is recommended that you go to an empty parking lot or somewhere where you can do figure eights uh, I'd say maybe five figure eights um, making the differential kind of flip and switch between the two tires so that all that clean new oil can kind of lubricate everything and make sure that everything's working properly you shouldn't be hearing any humming or hissing noises or anything like that or any type of noises um, this is the second time I do it and every time I do it I've gone through a parking lot and done a figure eight which we'll probably show in these videos um, but yeah you want to go ahead and do that all right so we've done the differential fluid transmission change we've done the oil change now it's actually time to kind of check out our catch can and see just how well it's doing in protecting the back of our intake valves and our intake from getting any blow by oil. All right, guys. So kind of loosened this this catch can, and sure enough, I mean you guys can see there that's all oil that's been collected in the last about 1,500 miles. Because I did check this catch can at about a thousand miles or 1,200 miles. So within a thousand miles, you can see all the oil that has been collected from the catch can I mean that is pretty significant if you do I don't say so myself now imagine normally after this 2500 mile oil change I will be doing the oil change every about 3,000 miles um, that's kind of recommended and the oil was pretty good so I didn't see any need to go ahead and be really you know overly changing oil so I'm gonna be doing this every 3,000 miles and this is how much oil the catch can collected in just a thousand miles so imagine that much more and and just to show you guys you guys can see there that is the clean side this top side that is what evacuates back out the clean side to the intake and you can see there is zero oil that little filter there is pretty clean um, and all of this oil and all of this oil would have been going through that back into the intake manifold so that's quite a bit and that for me is more than enough justification for you guys to look into getting an oil catch can especially for your LT1 engines which are basically direct injected and have no way of self cleaning themselves with fuel additives and stuff when it comes to clean the back of the intake valves so catch can definitely recommended now the mighty mouse catch can guys uh one thing that you'll notice is that it does have this breather but the breather's got this 
baffle uh, I don't know if you guys can pick it up in the camera but this baffle here that baffle basically means that this becomes a closed system no matter what now in the event of something happening where there becomes that you get excess crankcase pressure or ventilation this thing will rise up and relieve all the extra pressure that can't be relieved by this smaller um i think leave six a.m fitting so it definitely will help even in a situation where you might get generate extra excess uh crankcase pressure this thing can relieve that and hopefully maybe save the, your engine in some way shape or form but in the meantime it acts as a closed system so that you don't have any foul smells or anything like that so definitely definitely recommend the mighty mouse catch can guys all right guys let's go ahead and get this start up and let it warm up I love the smell of the E85 guys, it is so good. So we'll let it run, we gotta check under the car, make sure that there isn't any oil leaks and looks like everything is good to go. We'll let it warm up a little bit and then kind of let it run for a little bit. And then we'll turn it off, let everything kind of sit, and then check the oil and make sure that, you know, we're ready to go with the oil. So, what I'm going to do now is, now that we've got oil change done, differential done, and the catch can checked, we're going to go ahead and let it sit down, check the oil, then bring it back down, and then go do the figure eights to make sure that the differential and everything's good to go all right guys so we're gonna go ahead and do the figure eight so hopefully the camera will pick it up here like this That is how you basically break in the new oil when you do the differential swap, guys. You gotta find a nice empty lot and do the figure eights and just listen to see if there's any type of noises coming from the differential. And if there isn't, then you're good to go. Um, I didn't hear anything, so that means we are ready to go for the track tomorrow. All right, guys, we are back home and that is it for today's video. The car is ready and prepped. Um, definitely, this is things that you want to, and ha need to do if you want to make your sports car last long and have a good life. Um, oil changes, differential fluids, basically maintaining all the fluids, keeping the engine running in top tip shape. Top tip shape. The car is ready for the track tomorrow. We just got to put on the new wheels, and then we're off to the track. So stay tuned for that video, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one.